in this video, let's do some examples with the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus. We'll start basic. Let's let capital F of X be the integral from negative two, negative three to X of the sine of a T squared DT. F prime of X is the sine of X squared. Every bit as simple as that. Let me pause a moment to explicitly point out that the derivative does not depend on the number we have down here. That's maybe a little unintuitive, but it is true. For our next example, this example isn't really any more complicated than the one that comes before it. When I was trying to justify looking at functions that were written this way, I said that there was an error function, two divided by the square root of pi times the integral from zero to x of negative t squared dt. If you take the derivative of the error function, well, first of all, that constant stays put, as always happens when you take a derivative. And then the derivative of this. is e to the negative x squared. Let's do a slightly less rudimentary example. Instead of going from a to x, Let's go from X to A. Does this make it difficult to take the derivative? It does not. I mean, let's state that as our goal. We're trying to take the derivative. Taking the derivative is no big deal as long as you remember that you can flip 
your limits, and all that does is add a negative sign here. This negative one will stay put when we take the derivative to give us negative x squared. Finally, something maybe significantly less trivial, but I wouldn't say too bad, as long as you have a pretty solid understanding of the fundamental theorem and of the chain rule. Let's say that instead of going from zero to x, we go from zero to x squared. Now you do have a bit of a problem, rather more significant than just needing to put a negative sign in front of the integral. But the trick here is just to let whatever we have up here have a name. Call it U. Y equals the integral from zero to U of the cosine of T DT. Now be careful here y is a function of x. The derivative we actually want then is dy dx. Well, dy dx according to the chain rule is dy du times du dx. And now we continue to be careful. dy du is the cosine of u. Looking back at previous examples, whatever variable we have up here is the variable that shows up in the derivative. So the cosine of u And then du dx is 2x. We don't actually care about u. It's a completely fake variable that I created so I could use the fundamental theorem. I certainly don't want it in my answer. Well, fortunately, you is easily gotten rid of because we know that you is x squared.
In this video, we've done some examples with the first part of the fundamental theorem. It's unfortunate, but a lot of students, I think, end up forgetting the first part of the fundamental theorem because we use it so rarely compared to the second part. I must again emphasize, though, that's not because the first part is unimportant. It's just because applications like the error function are hard to talk about without any background. You should not forget the first part of the fundamental theorem, and you should be prepared to use it on I guess just on the final exam, the way this semester has worked out, but certainly you'll be tested on it then. 